On the 13th of August 1923, Gustav Stressmann was appointed Chancellor of the new and unstable Weimar Republic. Even though he served as Chancellor for only three months, Stressmann was responsible for shifting the trust in the Republic and started a period many describe as a golden age. From 1924 to 1929, Germany saw economic recovery and a cultural development fueled by Stressmann's policies. Thanks to a grand coalition formed by various centrist liberal parties, Stressmann made quick but effective reforms in his short period as Chancellor. His first move was to end the strikes in the Ruhr. By September 1923, passive resistance was over, which meant that the government was not compensating workers anymore and relations with the Allies improved. His next move was to replace the old currency with the Retten Mark. This was done in November 1923, which stabilized Germany's currency and fixed the problem of hyperinflation. Stressman had to step down as Chancellor as the SPD withdrew from his reshuffled government in November 1923. However, he was appointed Foreign Minister, a position from which he could take action to develop Germany. In August 1924, Stressman signed the DOS Plan, which was a temporary measure that was designed to strengthen and stabilize Germany's economy. The plan agreed that America would lend Germany 800 million marks, and a five-year payment plan was set for Germany to pay back the war reparations. Later in August 1929, Stressman signed the Young Plan, which was a final statement on reparations. This plan was extremely helpful for Germany, as it reduced payments for reparations by 67% and annual payments were spread to be paid by 1988. The plans increased the Allies' trust and tremendously relieved Germany's economy. However, this came with a cost, as Germany was now very dependent on America's economy and the dollar. Between 1924 and 1929, Stressman also worked on a series of international agreements that set Germany on the international stage. These were the pacts signed. In 1925, the Locarno Pact was signed, which was mutually agreed peace between France, Germany, Great Britain, Belgium, and Italy. This pact confirmed the borders agreed on the Treaty of Versailles. In 1926, Germany finally joined the League of Nations. This increased the peace and cooperation with the Allies and also gave Germany a veto on the organization. Also in 1926, Germany and the USSR expanded on the Treaty of Rapallo, which was signed to improve relations between both nations and remove any territorial claims that each country had on each other. This new treaty was called the Treaty of Berlin, which agreed to maintain good relations and both countries pledged neutrality if one of them was attacked by a third party. In 1928, the kellogg bryan Pact was signed, which was a massive peacekeeping effort that almost all nations agreed to. The nations who joined agreed to settle disputes diplomatically instead of going to war. Stressman's final success was the end of the Allied occupation, as by 1930, all Allied troops were out of the Rhineland. These international treaties increased Germany's safety, peace and cooperation. However, these treaties also fueled extremism within Germany, as many Germans felt that they had been stabbed in the back by their own government by negotiating with the same countries that had led Germany to physical and economic ruin. Economic stability and improved living standards gave German people the freedom and time to involve in social and cultural activities. Many artists now had the freedom to express themselves without being killed or arrested. This lack of censorship in art meant that artists such as George Gross would include erotic scenes in their paintings, something that was not common in Imperial Germany. Some art would include political statements and messages criticizing the government, such as this painting by Gross named The Eclipse of the Sun. This painting critiques the violence of the German elite by showing General Ponven Hindenburg surrounded by mindless bureaucrats. To his left, an industrialist carrying weapons whispers in his ear. The German people are depicted as a donkey, listening with his big ears but yet blind to what is going on, focused on his food. The most disturbing part of the painting is under the table, which shows a young man behind metal bars and a skeleton, warning future generations. This type of critique in his art shows the freedom and how unrestricted artists were during the Weimar Republic. Other artistic movements such as Bauhaus became increasingly popular. Bauhaus was an architectural movement based on simplicity and minimalism. Some designs look very modern, and it's surreal to think that these designs are from 1920 and not 2020. Artists also express themselves through literature as freedom allowed writers to focus more on emotions instead of the plot. For example, All Quiet on the Western Front was an anti-war book that was relatable to many soldiers and widows as it showed the gruesome truths of the war. Cinema and theater became increasingly popular, and stars such as Marlene Dietrich rose to fame due to their unseen sexual, free and realistic nature. People also felt comfortable attending clubs and cabarets in which erotic dances were performed and drinks were served. Acceptance of homosexuality and even cross-dressing grew. During this time, many groups benefited and suffered, some more than others. Vulnerable people such as veterans, orphans, widows, and the unemployed now benefited from state welfare as a public assistance system was in place. 
National unemployment insurance also helped the vulnerable. However, most of the systems had too many people, and many did not receive the necessary help. Women in the Weimar Republic felt freer and had more rights now that they could vote and involve themselves in politics. By 1926, there were 32 women deputies in the Reichstag, three times as many women as there were in the House of Commons. More women joined the workplace. This was as women had to fill the spots of men when they went to war, and now it was seen as socially acceptable. However, women had no freedom when married and had no equal pay. Jewish people were more represented in society, and many were successful in business and in culture, such as Martin Dietrich. However, hatred and anti-Semitism were quite common in society. Although many historians consider this era to be a golden age, not everybody enjoyed or participated. Many groups, specifically farmers, did not benefit from the economic growth due to global grain surplus and a price lump in 1925. Traditionalists and conservatives viewed cultural development as too much and felt threatened. Economic hardship and changes in society caused something called the backlash movement, which went against all the progress that the Republic was doing. Many of the people who supported the movement later supported the Nazi party, which after 1929 would rise in popularity. Thanks for watching. Please consider liking, subscribing, and checking other videos.